Uh, in the shop today, just a, uh, hopefully a fairly quick video, just a bit of a look around the shop, what's happening today, so just, so, just a video for the sake of a video, I suppose you can nearly say. So running some bushes on the manual lathe at the moment, I've uh, got another job running on the CNC, so uh, it's probably not worth setting up over there until that job's finished, and there's only uh, 10 bushes, 75 mil long, and, and another 10, 150 mil long, uh, fairly straightforward, just straight through bores. Just bring you over and just sort of show you a little bit of progress. So, I'm just trying to use up the hollow bar that I have so I don't have to order anything in. The customer wants the bushes fairly quick, and the um, steel supply is normally pretty good, but they're normally about anything from two to three days to get material. So, I'm just using up off cuts that, that, um, that are going to be closer to size. So, taking a little bit off the ODs, you can probably see, and there's some other pieces there. So, I've just stripped that off from one end and then flipping around and then machine to the other end you can probably see the, the joint line there which which will get cut there or anywhere I'll get cut at 75 mil and I'll get two pieces out there at number 75 and that's what I'm doing just going through just using up all my off cuts that'll obviously get cut off it's a bit of a waste of material but they're just all odd bits and pieces uh, laying around especially these little short bushes I keep these just off cuts and most of these are just all out of the metal well, out of the, the uh, materials rack and just trying to use up what I have. Just take over and show you what else is going on. I'm not dragging on for too long. So just cutting these on the bandsaw at the same time. Uh, this is the part that I make uh, that I make and sell. So coming from the hollow bar stock, um, just up on my tabletop bandsaw, which works well for me. Probably not great for for large sections, but they're they're around about um, 200 mil diameter with about a hundred and fifty mil I think it was I forgot now yeah about a hundred and fifty mil hole through the center and I'll take you over and show you the job running in the CNC to lathe uh, what's what how it's running at the moment but you get my words right so just cutting these so sort of doing three things at the same time uh, on the manual lathe cutting these and on the scene uh, on the CNC to lathe as well so that's the end of the bar there, you can probably just see the end of it down the end there. So this is the last of it, I've got about another eight more to cut and that's the end of that material that was sitting in my in my rack or down the bottom of my materials rack in the previous video. So just getting through those, so just let the bandsaw running in the background, uh, not the quickest thing to do but it um, yeah, eventually gets through it slowly anyway. Just go over to the CNC, have a look over there the next part of it. I'm going to take you inside for a bit of a look. So that's just finished, a little bit smoky in here, uh, probably a mist extractor would be nice in here but that's sort of uh, something else that can, that can wait for a little while, it gets a little bit smoky in here on these, well, not long runs but longish runs, you know, machine in the hollow bar. So all I do is just um, face off both sides, um, machine the ID to the finish size, chamfer OD, OD ID only on one side though and then I come back and turn so I break it up into a cycle it's just I just find it works better that way just the accuracy wise and as much as anything chip control um, I don't have a chip conveyor on my CNC lathe which is a bit of a pain but it works for me it's just a matter of just managing things to be able to do what you can do um, I used to make these on the manual lathe before so anything's an improvement over on the manual lathe so they're going through at the moment <coughs> excuse me so coming out into here so as I say uh, just faced off on the other side you can see the burr there where the boring bars come the boring bar comes through so face off one side flip him over face um, ID or face and chamfer ID ID when I do in the boring bar I eventually get my words right uh, face and then chamfer and then come down with the boring bar clean up the inside and just put a small chamfer on the inside there when I come back to do the OD as a separate op, it's just more so just for the, the way the parts held, it just works out easier that way. It might change sometime in the future, but that's how it's running at the moment. Uh, clean off the OD, so we just believe that so we leave about a small chamfer on the OD there, and the OD will get chamfered um, with, the, with the boring bar, so we'll just come in back in with the boring bar and just knock that, knock that off and just knock off the OD. And just take you over and show you what it looks like when it's when it's well semi-finished, I suppose, as far as um, 
where, where it goes to from there. There's still more work to do to it, but I'll take you over to show you what it looks like after that. So this is where we're heading for. So I think I've shown this part a few times before anyway, at least. Um, it's a part that I make, as I say, it's something that I make and sell. So there's still more work to do on this. So just get it to this point. I put it into stock and then do the rest of the work. So you can see the chamfers on there, as I say, so all the work's done. Come and do the OD um, chamfers and just come back with another tool. I'll just grab the tool just for those who might be interested and just show you the, the tool that I use to cut the ID out. I just chose to take the whole tool out because I just took it off the holder because it's a little bit of a pain to set up to get it running where it actually wants to cut. So just turn him over on his side there. So it's a four mil insert. So it definitely rips a fair bit of material out of there. So this is coming in chopping through here what I call castle turning so it'll come in plunge it down uh, step over plunge it down again and then you're left with a castle like a ridge on a castle and then you machine that off so plunge back in and then normally I get a fair bit of swarf so after about three cuts I've got to retract clear the chips and then come back in and then do another three so it is a bit of a pain retracting but because of the actual shape of the part it's just very difficult to get the chips out and to be able to get the insert running perfectly too where it's not um, chattering is a bit of a pain too. So it's running perfect now. So I'm just gonna leave it exactly where it is at the moment and just finish up with the part. And then we just come back with an IED tool that just cleans up the inside and cleans up the walls as you can probably see in there. So that just gets flipped around, machined both sides. So you can see, probably just see a little a little transition line there. It's not, a, it's not sticking up, it's just a line between the transition. So come in about halfway, plunge, come down, ramping down at an angle, hitting the center and then sweeping along up the wall and then out and just putting a little chamfer on the inside. You might be able to see the chamfer on the ID just for those who might be interested and just pick up that chamfer inside there. But just thought I'd show you that for those who might be interested. Um, another customer I do a little bit ongoing work for. Um, he was in with another company and has since gone out on his own and he shoots me work from time to time and this is uh, one job he, he sent to me. It's sort of funny because um, all he's done so far is just sent the parts to me but he hasn't told me what he wants to do with them yet. So the first things that turn up was this box of these two parts here and then the courier dropped these three off later with this bar over here. So I have no idea what the actual, what he, I'm supposed to be doing with them. All he said was, when I contact him, I'll send you an email. So it sounded like he was busy, so I just left him alone, and I've got plenty to do. So they're just sitting here waiting to be done whatever needs to be done to them. So obviously there's some sort of die. You can see the maybe the mark on there, the impression on there. I'm guessing there's some sort of... He does a lot of sheet metal work. So um, some sort of folding die, I'm guessing. So I don't know what the serrations are in here, whether he wants me to fix these, but they are hardened, so I can't really do anything with them. I can probably take the hardening out of it and then um, machine it and then re-harden them again. It's probably not a problem, but as I say, I haven't heard any more about it as far as what he wants me to do with these parts. So I've got five of those there. Who knows what I'm doing with them? So that's a job that's probably going to be sitting here till next week uh, if he doesn't contact me any earlier. So that's something something that'll go on not too soon. And one other job that's just come in, some bolts, some high tensile uh, 10.9s, I think they were, um, bolts. So these are for a, um, um, a chassis manufacturer, well, say a body, a body chassis manufacturer. So they manufacture custom chassis for trucks and things like that, and body builders. So, what I have to do is bore through the center. So the ultimate goal is to finish up with, why I'm showing you this is just for the sake of showing you what I'm doing in the shop today. So if it'll stay there, if I get my shaky hand out of the way. So the ultimate goal is to have that threaded into there. So it's an eighth BSP thread. So I've got to bore down to about halfway, halfway through this blank section here and then I port back in with a 4 mil hole so this is used as obviously a, a pivot point for something and the grease gets back out into here so that's all I have to do so bore down into here they need about a 8.5 mil hole bored through here 
and then obviously uh, tapped at the end here to take that to take that grease nip on and just poured it through from one side with a four mil hole and just a chamfer on there so the grease can come out and that's just more of those parts over there anyway so I've just got a stack of those there so just get them to that point I come back set it up again it's a little bit of probably backward ways to do it but it's just working for me at the moment I just find that way to work as far as machining these parts and to get it to that well to get it to that finished point so so that's where you know that's where we're heading for so it's not a customer part while well, it is it ends with a customer but they're not screaming out for the parts I just make them put them in the stock and just have them sitting here at this point and they have some other parts well it actually gets cut welded so there's other work to do on this as well so there's welding and other work to do to this as well so let's just get it to that point put them into stock as the customer orders them I do the rest of the work but it's just getting them to this point at the moment and just cutting the last of that hollow bar on the bandsaw at the moment and just sort of showing you what I'm doing today so what's happening in the shop right now so that's sort of like the sort of videos I want to do is just show you jobs that I am doing at the moment one other little job I just might grab I've just spotted on the bench I'll just grab it just for out of curiosity it was supposed to be a fairly short video but it hasn't turned out that way so I've made these for a customer they've been sitting here for probably two weeks now so um, they're obviously not in a hurry for them there's some sort of injector nozzle so that's what I got told anyway so I've made I've got one, one, one of them to sample, I don't know which one it is because I've just copied what they've, what they've given me. So I've just made these on the manual lab, uh, 316 stainless, and they've got a, a, a concave dish in there, you might be able to see it, which is the camera will focus. So in there it's actually concave in there, so that was a little bit of a pain to cut that. And um, uh, eighth inch through hole, so it's got an eighth inch hole going through there. So yeah, they were fun, probably that eighth inch eighth inch hole was probably the, the worst part it's just getting through you can sort of gauge my, my my dirty my dirty thumb there the size of they're not huge but 316 drilling that and uh, they're drilling that smaller hole and i didn't have a carbide drill to drill uh, eighth anyway um, i have larger but not but not that size so and for that volume it's not worth buying in one well a couple of drills are pretty much guaranteed carbide drill I'll probably break one so that means two two maybe three drills and just for six parts basically as I say one of them is a sample so one of those ones in there are a sample I just so I just show you that so that was all done on the manual labor so fairly straightforward as I say except for that bloody through hole the pain in the ass and just some whatever this is must, must get mounted somehow yeah that's all that, that's all they've told me injection nozzle so and the concave uh, recess in here not sure if that's going to show up well enough or not. But it doesn't matter anyway. You might be able to pick that up on the video. I'm watching on the tiny little screen, so it's probably showing up on your screen a little bit better than mine. But I just wanted to just show you. So I want to keep going with the videos and just trying to find things that I can include in videos. Um, I still have the review coming up on the Vivor welding positioner, so I'm looking at doing that soon. Just a little bit busy at the moment. And another project coming up on a bead blast cabinet that I'm going to be working on doing a fair few videos on just start uh, putting it out there trying to sell myself a little bit to you guys on youtube get you watching but otherwise that'll do for this video thanks for, for watching just so i just bring you along on a bit of a day in the life of you know what's happening today and jobs that i'm doing right now and i look forward to seeing you probably the next video will be that vivor uh welding position i'm um, looking forward to getting it done for the guys who are hanging out to watch that and for a bit more information and answer a few questions that were possibly missing from some of the early videos I posted. I look forward to seeing you guys soon, and I say bye for now.